Uh, g'day, guys. These Corollas suffer of uh, evaporator leaks, um, which can be quite hard and challenging to, to diagnose. This car was losing gas over eight, nine months, which became six months, which became three weeks. And, you know, sometimes you do get the gas, if you're lucky, coming out of the vents. But there is another phenomenon where you do get gas coming out of vent, um, a mist coming out of vents, which can wrongly lead you to change an evaporator, which in most cars you do not want to be doing. Now, on this Corolla, um, where is it? Here. You can see the dye. You can see the leak. Uh, you can see the dye there. So we're replacing the TX valve at the same time. It slides in into the center of the car. I, I'm not feeling great today to make a video over how to do this job, but I'm just saying, guys, if you're gassing the car, you're losing gas. These are pretty solid with the hoses, and, you know, if you, you, you're not getting a dye that you can see, I use my, my tool, which is a, a sniff tester, and you peel back, peel back the rubber there gently, on the entry in the in, inlet there, and um, and I got the the gas coming out there. There is another option as well, uh, which helps, is to use a gas that leaks faster than R134. One of those gases is that high chill gas, so we like to use that for testing. Jap cars hate that gas. I don't recommend that gas. It's a dry gas. Um, it's an unstable gas. Forget the fact that it's basically LPG and it's explosive because the new cars have come out with the one, two, three, four. But yeah, I like to use high chill um, and it's cheap to have on hand. Um, there it is down there with a dye in it. Um, especially when I know there's a leak we can't find. So if it's a regular regas and the customer's like, oh, I'm regassing it every two years, we just regas it with R134. We get our bloke in, our electrical. But if it's leaking and it's a problem and it's bouncing between workshops, I like to use high chill. It's a smaller molecule that leaks faster. And that's what you're seeing here. That's what you're seeing here. You're seeing the high chill. So it's smaller, it leaks a lot faster, but these venerable little Corollas, you don't want to go without air conditioning just because it's an old car. A lot of them are battered up with faded paint and they're still good. You know, it's not the end of the world to change the evaporator here. Um, and that's it. That's just a little tip probably for the owners, some mechanics out there, if you're struggling to find the leaks. This is a low barrier hose, actually. I'm surprised before when I said, oh, the hoses, and this is a low barrier hose but I've never ever changed one. Then again, we're just one workshop. We're one, you know, someone who works at Toyota might say, oh, they go all the time. Um, have I ever done a compressor on this model? I can, I can honestly say I, I might have, but I don't remember it, but I remember doing how many Audis and Golfs and Q7s and Q5s and guys, like these cars are bulletproof, we know that. Why did the evaporator leak? Why do they leak at the evaporator? It's a common fault with these cars. It is actually a common, common thing with these cars. I heard about it years ago, and now I've seen it. I mean, it's Nippon Denso. This is an original one. We're actually getting a Denso one as well. It's funny with mechanics though, eh? When we're like, we're getting you the same part, and like in the Audis, you know, they use Denso compressors now, and they don't seem to last. But yeah, we're getting a genuine evaporator for it. You'd think that would be the best thing. Um, yeah. How on earth does it happen? I don't know how it happens. Good little unit though. This is how they pump out the freezing cold air they're famous for. Toyotas are great with the air conditioning. They really are.